What's up everybody? My name is Zach and today I'm going to show you exactly how I build a drop shipping website with no code whatsoever. Um, about 10 bucks for a domain name and just less than a dollar a day for the best hosting around. So you can see here this is the website that I've built and we're going to walk through. Um, it sells a back scratcher that you can probably source for about 10 bucks. Um, I've got it here listed for $59, so that's a $49 margin. And then I would just advertise this website around the web, write content about it, entertain people, and get them to come here and buy this. So I'm going to be talking a little bit in the beginning about what drop shipping is and a little overview. If you've heard enough about that, you can go ahead and skip straight to the first step and just use the timeline to do so. Um, but other than that, enjoy. What is dropshipping? Um, dropshipping is just a particular type of supplier to online retailer relationship um, where you sell products to your customers and then when those customers order from you, your store automatically sends an invoice to the supplier, probably by email, so they know exactly what product to ship and where and then they charge you after you've already collected money from your customer, which is awesome. Um, because of that, you don't need any upfront capital. You are not buying any or stocking any product. Um, the supplier does all that for you and they send it straight to your customer and they can brand it for you too. So, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, I've got $5,000, how can I start a business online? I've got $1,000, $500, what can I do with that? Um, you don't wanna be spending really any money until you have a working business model you can scale. And then that 5,000, 1,500, whatever you've got is simply just gonna help you grow that business model faster and make uh, you know, bring more customers to your site to buy more from you. So as you run these tests and you see what works, you start selling more and more, uh, pretty soon it doesn't make sense to drop ship anymore. Drop shipping is just a method to test your, um, to test your processes, your marketing campaigns, your brand, your product offering, uh, the way you approach customers. And then once you start selling a lot, it's not really gonna make sense to drop ship anymore. You're gonna be moving up the supply chain uh, you might be buying the product in bulk ahead of time and sending it to Amazon to run through their FBA, their fulfillment uh, services, or you might store it at a warehouse of your own depending how much you're, you're selling or what you're selling. It's all going to depend just based on how you can make the most amount of money, the biggest margins. So that's a ways off in the future. It doesn't really matter that, that much right now. Whether you're drop shipping, affiliate marketing, or selling information, you got nearly the same process here. You need one, a good offering, a good platform to sell on, you need great marketing. So we've already discussed how we're gonna source these products for our store through job shipping, um, not in depth. Uh, if you want an in-depth guide, I will give you a product sourcing and marketing guide that shows you exactly how, to, how I do that stuff. If you just email me your finished store URL and your WP Engine receipt, your hosting receipt, if you email that to Zach at blogtojob.com, I'll give you access to that guide on exactly how I do sourcing and marketing for free. It's really easy stuff. So this, this video is gonna focus more on the platform you're selling because that marketing and product sourcing will be taken care of later. It's crucial to have your own platform where you leave a lot of money on the table. I used to sell on eBay, um, Amazon, Craigslist in the beginning when I first got started at 14 years old and they charge a ton of fees and not only do you pay huge fees, but your products is alongside hundreds or thousands of similar products and it's really difficult to differentiate yourself. People are always looking for the best price on, the, on those platforms. You want people buying for your brand because they perceive that your, your products is better than the rest. So you also only get the opportunity to sell it to impulse buyers. Most customers are not gonna buy a product until they think about it their fifth time. So it comes top of mind and they consider it that fifth time. So you wanna be able to serve them ads that you know, there's ads on Facebook and Google to follow people around the internet. You wanna serve them those so they think about the product more. You can send them articles about the product or how to use or you know, case studies about the product depending on what it is. But you wanna be able to do that and you also wanna be able to sell those people more similar products in the future or get them to refer their friends. So you need their email address, you need to send them valuable content, you need them to come back to buy more similar products. You want happy customers, you want retention, you want growth here. The best new product is an existing customer. You don't wanna just sell them and make 50 bucks one time, you wanna sell them five times over two years and make $250. And you also wanna get their friends coming and buying from you as well. Uh, so how do we get our own store set up? It's all gonna start with hosting. Uh, you may, maybe you've heard of hosting before, maybe you've read, or read articles or watched videos on this sort of stuff before. Typically what you're gonna see, what I saw in the beginning about starting my own website was that uh, 
you want to start with shared hosting like Bluehost or HostGator, like four bucks a month, six bucks a month. The reason everybody recommends those is because they have affiliate programs that pay good money for just getting people to sign up for four to six dollar subscriptions, you know, four to six dollars a month. And the thing about it is nobody actually uses it. It's like a gym membership. People get set up with it and they get so frustrated with it, they never do anything with it. And those companies just sit there and ping your account for months on end. Four to six dollars. You never bother to turn it off because it's four to six dollars a month. Um, you know, I said people get so frustrated with those sites, and there's a few reasons why. I mean, if you set up your site with shared hosting, you're pretty much asking to fail. And the primary reason is it's shared hosting. You share an IP address with many other people, and most of the people using shared hosting don't have the best of intentions. There's a lot of spammers. As soon as they get their IP address that you're sharing with them, tagged as malicious. Uh, because of their spamming activities, you're not going to be able to post your link to Facebook. You're not going to be able to advertise on Google or, or Facebook. You're not going to be able to email from your domain name or anything. This has happened to me three times. In fact, I set up longerjob.com if you're, if you're watching on this website um, or that website. I set it up on a discount hosting provider so that I can make a video showing how to uh, migrate your site over from shared hosting to WP Engine. And immediately, immediately when I set up my email, I was flagged on MailChimp as malicious, as a spammer. I couldn't send out anything to my subscribers. So uh, that shows you how fast it happens. It's happened to me three times in total. So frustrating. Uh, the second reason you, want to, you don't want to use shared hosting is for site speed. I mean, you get five visitors on your shared hosting site at once and there's a good chance it's not even going to load. Um, Walmart did a case study that showed after three seconds of page loading times, conversion rates dropped exponentially. I mean, you don't really sell anything after a three second page load time. You need your store to load fast. The other thing is security. I mean, you're dealing with customer data here. You want to make sure that customer data is secure and you also want to make sure nobody can hack your website and just delete everything. Um, so if you want to have a shot at any of this stuff, if you want to have a chance, if you want to do well, you gotta go for managed WordPress hosting. Even if you do well on shared hosting in the beginning, you're gonna end up switching to managed WordPress hosting for one of these reasons. So you might as well just start with it. If you want to avoid all this stuff, you want to go with a managed hosting provider like WP Engine. Now at WP Engine, you're not going to have these shared IP address woes. Uh, your page load times are going to be lightning fast. Your site's going to be secure and they back up everything every 24 hours. So if, if something gets deleted for some reason, you will still have it available to you. Um, the biggest thing for me is WordPress experts. They have support 24 seven. You can chat, you can get on the phone with them. You can email them at any time to get support. I'm not a technical guy if you're watching this video, you probably aren't either. Um, if you don't know how to build a website already, uh, you might need that support sometime along the line at $29 a month. You know, it's amazing the amount of support you get. I, I think they lose money on me from the amount of phone calls I make. I don't know. Now, you know, I said it's $29 a month. Hosting is all you need. Um, and then a 99 cent domain, maybe 9.99 depending on what you need but you're really not spending much money here. Um, that's all you need to get up and running and pushing product. Um, but I wanna share with you a little trick when it comes to pricing with WP Engine that I came across. I'm an affiliate of WP Engine, so I am given coupon codes. The current one is speed up and that gets you 20% off your first month. So like I said, use that, you're gonna be paying less than a dollar a month. But the thing about WP Engine is their annual subscription gives you two months off already. So you can get 12 months for the price of 10, but like I said, speed up is 20% off your first payment. So uh, this is kind of absurd here, but if you use that speed up discount on an annual subscription, you really get 12 months for an eight month price. I mean, it's 66, 66 cents a day. I'm not sure if they meant to do it that way or if they meant to allow that, uh, get it while it lasts, I guess. Anyways, anyways, let's start walking through the process here, actually setting up the website. I'm gonna be moving to the screen capture here so you can see exactly what you need to do. Um, if you haven't already, open up WP Engine using my partner link and follow along. Um, my voice might change a little bit here just because I'm going to be voicing over the screen capture and not recording with this camera anymore. All right, so like I said, go ahead and use my partner link to open up WP Engine and that's going to get you that speed up discount for 20% off your first payment. Um, we'll just use this personal plan here for $29 a month. Um, you're gonna to wanna to use that speed up coupon and it's gonna take 20% off your first payment. Um, if you go annual here, you see you already get two months free, but then you um, also get another 20% off, which basically you're paying for eight months instead of 12. Um, huge discount, if you just go monthly, you're gonna save about six bucks, still a nice little bit off. Either way, 
monthly is going to be under a dollar a, a day to host. And if you go annually, it's going to be about 65 cents a day. So I've got the speed up discount applied. I'm going to go ahead and fill in my info. It's personal, so I'm going to skip around all the personal stuff. After I go ahead and press enter there, this is what I get. Um, you know, I get a... I get a website at WP Engine, zachpen.wpengine.com, um, a link for my portal, which is just that, dash wp-admin, or slash wp-admin. Um, you can see down here uh, different options we got here, migrating your site, we're not doing that, um, but support's always available if you get stuck at any point in this process, they're available 24-7. So we're going to go ahead and log into my.wpengine.com to manage our hosting. Um, keep that tab open and go ahead and check out the username you use, .wpengine.com. You can see we've already got a blog live here. It's bare bones. We're going to change that pretty soon here. First thing we got to do, though, you don't have to do this just now if you don't want to. If you don't have a domain name in mind, then don't make one yet. Uh, but we're going to get a domain name from Namecheap, and it could be as cheap as $0.88. Cents. Mine comes out to about 10 bucks, and I apply a discount to get it a little cheaper than that. Um, this is just going to be a domain I register that I can use for different videos and then eventually maybe a blog for myself. But um, you know, just demonstrating here for you how you can do it. Go ahead and select the one you want. If it's available, you might have to try a few different ones. I would recommend going .com domain over everything else, but uh, you know whatever you want, you can do .org if you want .net. Um, go ahead and select one year for this thing. It's just going to be ten bucks for the year. Confirm that order. Again, personal info going in here, so I'm skipping that. Um, down here, we do want to associate the domain and enable at the time of purchase. Go ahead and click continue down here to move on and then it's going to ask for a payment method I pay with PayPal continue on and on the next screen I'm pressing manage to go ahead and get that to point to the right website you can see here domain list there's only one on there I've only got one domain with on this account on Namecheap I'm going to go ahead and press manage and then we're going to go over here to advanced DNS now you can use what's called a CNAME or an A record to point to your website. I like CNAME better because if they change the IP address, you're still golden. Um, right here, you are going to want to change where it says parkingpage.namecheap.com, and we're going to make that our zachpen.wpengine.com. Um, You can see here in the WP admin that we've got opened up that before even changing that and uh, applying the change in Namecheap, we want to go into these settings here in our WP admin. Again, that's zachpen.wpengine.com slash WP dash admin. Um, yours is going to be different based on your WP Engine username, and you're going to want to change those links to the domain that you just selected. Make sure you get it right the first time. Then we can come back to Namecheap and we can change the CNAME record to our new domain name and we can just leave the URL redirect record right there because that is going to make sure if somebody goes to www.zackpin.com it just takes them to um, zackpin.com. It's a little cleaner looking. I changed my time to live to one minute just so the, the DNS would propagate faster. Um, you're going to see right here zackpin.com doesn't load yet um, immediately after making those changes. You have to wait a little bit um, in the meantime, we're going to go over here to my.wpengine.com and make a little change so it knows um, what kind of domains we got pointing where. So if you click that little arrow, press domains, and go to add new domain, we can type in that zackpin.com and it knows that that's going to point to our website. And we want it to redirect from www.zackpin.com again. That just makes it so it will show zackpin.com even if somebody types in www. Um, after that, we want to go over here to the site migration and press manually migrate your site. Then scroll down and enter in an email address down here so that they will notify you when your site is actually propagated. The DNS can take two hours, five minutes, 
two days to propagate. You never know. Um, and so you can see I got that email and they let me know that the site was live and ready to go. Yeah, if your DNS doesn't propagate right away, if, if the domain doesn't work, don't worry about it. Um, now you can see you here, I'm just highlighting up there. Uh, we are on zackpin.com slash wp-admin or you know wp-admin. Uh, my site has propagated here. We are going to go ahead and start playing around the dashboard. Don't be overwhelmed by it at first. Uh, it looks a little complicated maybe, but you're going to find out it's very intuitive. Um, you can see there's already a first blog post, a first comment on here from WordPress. You can just delete those if you want. WP Engine's got some information, um, some updates sort of stuff. Let's go ahead and go to plugins, and we're going to get that WooCommerce plugin installed for free, and that's that's going to make like... That's going to allow us to handle the store from all aspects, basically. If you search WooCommerce, you're going to want to find the Dolphin here. It's probably in the top left. Install that plugin. And you can really just skip this for now. Um, I'm going to say, no thanks, I already did this. Over here, press activate plugin and it's going to take you to this WooCommerce page um, where we start to set things up. I'm going to look at it a little bit with you and then I'm just going to kind of skip through because it's all kind of common sense. It's going to show you though what kind of pages that um, this WooCommerce plugin is going to install for you. Um, it's going to say your store is ready. Do you want to allow them to collect data? I don't. Um, you can if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and create my first product though. After I've made it through all of those screens, you can see I, I skipped a few. Um, the product I found is a deer antler back scratcher with a hickory handle. Um, it's over here on deergear.com. I thought it was interesting when I searched for a back scratcher, and I've been thinking about how nice back scratches are lately. You can see down below my mouse there, it says that's a drop ship item, and please allow 7 to 10 days to ship, so I know I can find that somewhere to source it, and it's probably going to be around 10 bucks. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write this description for it and a name for it. Scroll down here, say I want to do a simple product, I'm going to put in a price, a sale price, how long I want that sale to last for, a skew of like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, then you can use all those different tabs and you can select inventory, how you want shipping to work. Um, it's all pretty straightforward. If you've ever bought stuff online, you're going to be able to figure this sort of stuff out. Um, I do recommend anchoring the price higher with a regular price um, and just doing a sale price, basically. Um, people are going to feel like they're getting a better deal just because they see that, see that sale price. I always use a sale. Now, we're just using one product for this drop shipping website. I recommend you do the same. Just make one main sales page to sell this one product um, and see how you do. Test out the waters. I always, when I go into a new niche, I just start with one product and see if I can sell that. I get out on social media. I get out there and I produce content. I, my, I maybe buy some ads on Google AdWords if it makes sense to. Um, but really, I just write content and drive traffic to my site um, directly. And then I... Use a Facebook pixel to capture those people on Facebook, their, their emails on Facebook, basically, so that I can serve them ads in their news feed later on um, to get them back to buy the product. Because most people won't buy the first time they see your website, but about the fifth time they think about the product is usually when they buy on average. So, like I said, not going to do a full store today. It's not necessary. You can if you want. But um, you should really just test out the waters and see if you can successfully sell one product, and then you'll know how to add more products later. Um, and you can just put related products. So like I said, I'm starting with a back scratcher. Maybe I'd add more back scratchers later on. Um, or maybe I would add attachments for the back scratcher, or like, you know, you could go a million different ways with this thing. Happy scratching. All right. Again, I previously recorded this, um, so I'm just waiting for myself to go ahead and move on already. If you're following along, that's great. 
down here in the product short description, put something that uh, customers will see immediately on this, the actual sales page for the product. And if they scroll down, they'll see that longer description. Just a silly description I wrote for now. You'll probably take yours a little bit more seriously, but this isn't a site that I intend to take live, or at least not right away. Um, I don't exactly have time for the project just this minute, but I might make it a case study later. You can say I've added a product image. Um, I think you can imagine how that's going to show up when you actually go into the sales page. Um, could take some adjusting, we'll see. All right, now that we got our, our first prod, our first product entered, um, you're, you're going to want to go ahead and check out WooCommerce here. Um, you can see they've added a little tab to your WP admin, and we got a spot for orders, we got a spot to add coupons if we want to, different reports for sales we've made, and all that good stuff, analytics, data. Um, the customers we sell to. Eventually you have a customer list here and you can retarget those customers. Product stock, you can enter that in manually, what you've got available or what your supplier tells you you've got available. Um, we got a settings tab here. We can talk about products. We can enter in dimensions and weight. Um, taxes for different states. You can have those auto-loaded, I'm pretty sure. What's your checkout page look like? Uh, we're going to skip through those. Main thing I want to touch on here is, you know, like I said, we're doing drop shipping here. Best way, in my opinion, to let your supplier know that you have a product you sold and you want them to go ahead and ship it to them. Assuming you have one supplier here um, and you've worked out with them that you're just going to email them when you have a product you need shipped, and um, then you can just put in their email here and it's going to email both you and them when a product is sold. It's going to email you both. Um, what the customer's address is so they can go ahead and send that product to them and coordinate with you if something needs to be uh, handled. So um, just a little bit more about WooCommerce options. Got a page with different add-ons for different things you might want to do with the store. Um, you can see there's different payment gateways uh, that you could install. Some of them cost money, some of them are free, you know. Anyways, moving on. Let's go on to the themes. Um, you can, go, you can go ahead and click Appearance and Themes, then Add New. Um, right here you see some featured themes. We are looking for a theme to sell one product. So we want something that looks like the kind of sales page uh, to sell one product here. And you also want it, to be, um, you want it to be integrated with WooCommerce. So some of these themes aren't meant for commerce, um, but most of the ones that could be used to sell something will say that you can um, use WooCommerce with it. Optimizer is one of those you could use. Um, it says it is responsive, which is another thing you want. Responsive means that no matter what browser they load the site on, it's going to load well. Mobile, iPad, laptop, whatever. And then you can see it's ready for WooCommerce down there. Um, most of these themes, if they're any good, uh, most of these themes are going to allow you to change everything without writing any code. It's just going to be kind of drag and drop or upload photo here. Um, the designer of the theme has already made it look good. You just got to tweak it to your preferences. Fill it in with text that you want and that sort of thing. You can see I've already got Sarah Flight installed because I was toying around with this thing earlier. Um, I want to show you Themeisle who makes Zara Flight. They got some pretty great themes here too. Um, I am an affiliate for them, so if you buy, I'll make a small commission. I don't recommend you buy it first though. I think you might try one of these out. These things actually do come with free versions first. You're just kind of stuck with the color scheme that they um, give you, but you can just kind of work within that. Find a picture that kind of matches um, the color scheme. Make your logo match it. You can work within that for the time being, and then you can upgrade later if you need to. Um, whenever I use, you know, whenever I make a new website, I usually use this Sarah Flight theme. You can, you know, blogtojob.com, which you're probably watching this video on, was made with Sarah Flight, and I've never, I've yet to pay for the, the $99 one because I haven't needed to change the colors or use any of the locked content. Um, besides theme aisle, though, another place you might check for an e-commerce store theme would be Woo Themes, which is, you know, same company as WooCommerce. Here's their themes. A lot of them cost money, but I'm on the free page. You can see there's a lot of different free themes you can use um, to build your website out, depending on if you want it to be content heavy, um, if you want it to just be a storefront, kind of, whatever you want. So 
we're going to go ahead and use this Sierra Flight. Go ahead and install that. Um, it's going to install just like a plugin, and you're going to see you have that op the option to go to Customizer. Customizer is this nice little application here on the left side. It's got all the different stuff we can edit on the home page. Um, it lets us edit the menu, the logo, everything. It's awesome. So, going to go ahead and change the site title. I came up with a little clever name for my uh, back scratcher here called Papa's Claw. Going to make a silly little description for it and then move on. You're going to want a logo for up there uh, to replace that Sarah Flight with. So I'm going to go ahead and use this Squarespace logo maker. You can go ahead and use it too if you want. Just type in that address at the top. Um, a lot of times I like to type in half of the name and the tagline um, for the logo so that I can just drag that over here and make it the same size and then put the icon that I select in between the two. That's generally the format I go for logos. I'm not a designer, but it always ends up looking pretty decent. Um, I'll select something here. Like I said, I'm just throwing this together right now. It'll turn out pretty good. Um, but if I was making a logo for real, I'd spend some more time on it. Just using this application, though. Uh, like I said, it's not that complicated. Just throwing this together. Just bear with me here. So I've kind of abandoned the logo for now because we're going to want to decide on a, a background picture, and I want the logo to match it, so just leave it for now. Um, we're going to customize this big title section up here, change the main content, um, make up a little tagline, get back scratches like dads anytime, anywhere, and then make a button that takes people straight to the sales page. That's what you call it, call to action. We want people to go straight to it and buy the dang back scratcher and make that 49 bucks. What else can we customize here? So, time to add that background image. Um, I've used I use this website called Pixels for really high quality free stock photos that people kind of just donate. Um, and I've I've just gonna I use this other site called Pick Jumbo sometimes too. There's a lot of free ones, but you want to make sure that the pictures you use, um, you know, you're legally entitled to use them. So, I found this funny little picture of this guy in the. Uh, and the weird hat and log cabin. Um, you can see it is free for personal and commercial use, and I'm going to go ahead and download that and make it my background. So, select that picture and upload it to my media gallery on WordPress. Choose that image, and you can see it's loaded a little funny. It's uh, I kind of like it like that actually, but it's not what I had in mind. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and edit that down to the way it's supposed to look. You can see here if I if I load this site right now, it is live. Looks pretty cool, like I said, just having his eyes down there. Um, but I'd rather you see more of him, so I'm going to change the image. Or I'm going to change it, and I'm going to adjust the the uh, height of that image, and it's going to scale it down for me to the right width to go along with that height and then I'm going to try it again and see how it looks. So just up update that picture and go back and try again. See now it says 1000 pixels and we're going to publish that. Now you can see it looks a little better. You can see his whole face there. I like that, so I'll stick with that for now. Uh, if you reload the site in full screen, full width here, see it looks pretty dang good. So I've got a couple of tools here that I use. Like I said, I'm not a designer. I don't really have an instinct for these sort of things. But I want my logo to match that picture. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload it to Pictaculus here, and it's going to tell me what the most prominent colors are in the picture. It's going to give me color codes for them, so I can go ahead and use those in whatever program I want. In this case, I'm going to use it in Squarespace logo. Um, so I'm just going to take the most prominent color here and see from the picture it's pretty common. And then I got Adobe's color wheel here. It's another free tool. Um, you can select different types of color matching schemes, but um, you always want to put that color code in the second uh, box, and it's going to give you colors that match. Well, not necessarily match, but you know they're associated with it uh, in different ways. So, like monochromatic is one way, triad apparently, complementary. Don't ask me detailed questions on how this works because I have no idea. I just use it. I find stuff that looks decent together using it, and I put them together. It's that simple. So I'm going to try out this orange one here. And to change the color of this text, I'm just going to copy that and then paste it into font color. And then I'll change the claw to that same font color again. Now I'm not sure what I want to use for the bear here. I think I'll copy this hex code for that color we just used, put it over here, and see what we get very similar colors. I'm just going to go ahead and take this one on the end and make the bear that color. Again, if I was doing this for real, it'd take a little bit more time, take it a little bit more seriously, but uh, we're just doing this to show you how it's done. So, And that looks usable to me. Might just try a couple different fonts. See if anything else kind of goes with the uh, the theme we're trying to we're trying to get going here. And I've skipped a little bit, finally selected one, and we're going to run with that. So you can buy the high resolution photo if you want, the high resolution ver version of the logo. I think that's $10. Um, I'm just going to download the free one, the, the um, low resolution one, and it comes with a watermark on it, but it'll be okay for my purposes. It might be for yours too. Now, to get that logo uploaded, we're going to come over here to Site Identity, upload the logo we just downloaded, and it's going to put it right up there for us. Always make sure you save and publish your work. Now we're going to mess with the content section. I've decided I'm just going to go ahead and put the product in there um, in the R focus. Right now you may have seen or may have noticed by now that there is some icons with some text that just talks about the theme for now. Um, some focus section widgets they call them. But I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of them because it's not what I want there. You know, I could make some icons related to the back scratch and write some text. It's just not the look I'm personally going for at the moment. So instead, I'm going to opt to just put in text. Now, I said we were going to do this with no code. I lied, I guess, because we're going to write one line of code. We don't actually have to write it. Um, if you just paste the picture you want into, um, into a post or your product description, and then you press the text tab over here, you can get the, the, uh, the code for that, and you can put it in any text box, and it'll show the image. So put the text, the code into this content box over here for the uh, text widget we selected, and you can see it's loaded quite nicely. Making up these descriptions and titles on the spot, just going to adjust that and I like ah yes that's the spot better so continuing on um, we got an about us section down here and you you may have noticed that in the beginning of the video when I showed you this the finished version of this site I didn't have this about us section um, I ended up opting against it but I just want to show you how you would you would edit that if you wanted to 
Um, it loads a little cleaner like this when the site is in full screen, but regardless, we're going to go ahead and change it from here, and I'll show you how it ends up. I'm just going to type some silly, silly copy here and show you how you can expect it to show up. So, skipping all that in the video, um, you can see I've written some stuff. There were some icons down below for skills that showed what percent of, I don't know what those, those uh, little icons were supposed to communicate. But I've deleted those, I've removed those just like we removed the focus section widgets. And I'll go ahead and load the page full screen so you can see what this stuff ended up looking like. Product looks really good. Text is a little off, but I'll fix that later. You can see below you got some other sections we can go ahead and customize but I think I'm just gonna opt to remove them because sometimes less is more and I uh, want a pretty simple sales page here so I'm gonna go ahead and just hide the team section and later on I can edit it if I want to um, same for testimonial section the color on the testimonial section is yellow it's a yellow background um, you can see here and uh, that's not gonna match my color theme and I don't want to pay to upgrade that, so I'm just going to go ahead and hide that too. Latest news. There's no latest news about this product just yet. I'm going to hide that. Contact us. Nobody's going to want to write an email on a contact form for a back scratcher on the home page. No need for that. I'm going to hide it. With this ribbon section here, um, you can add this ribbon in the middle of the page. But... I started to type here and realized that was the green one and green wasn't going to go with my color my color scheme here so I'm going to adjust the one that goes on the bottom of the page and it's just going to be something where you know people have read past that product um, section of the sales page they saw what it looks like they were enticed and they want to go to the sales page so I'll put a hashtag there for now until we get an actual link to the product page and I think that's all I need to, maybe I'm wrong. Yep, okay, we got the text align here. We got that ribbon section down here. And you can see, if you click the sample page up in the top right, it has some silly little page. Um, there's a shop that has all the items you might have in the in the store. Like I said, we're just doing one for now. We're not even going to need that shop. Just the product page, really, the checkout and the cart. You can see the longer description shows up below. And you have the option to have redu reviews there. Additional information that might be specs, uh, depending on your product. Um, and that short description that we wrote shows up right there, right next to the picture. Um, that picture needs some adjusting, but we're not going to bother with that for now. So you can see it kind of cuts off on the right side and the left side too. Now, I would just want to take the time to adjust that menu up in the top right. Like I said, I don't want all those things. Um, but I'll show you how you would change those. I'm going to go ahead and create a new menu here and tell it that we want that to be the primary menu that's in the top right. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and paste in the URL that takes me to this sales page for Papa's Claw that you see on the right, and I'm just going to click Buy Now, and I think that's going to be the only thing I'm going to use on the menu. Lots of other stuff. You can add to the menu if you want to. You can add a link to your blog. Um, you can add links to specific posts and pages you create there, categories of posts. Um, if your product is, if the marketing for it is highly driven by content. Now you can see all we have on the home page is a buy now up in the top right. If you want to buy, you can see I've already visited this page a few times, added stuff to the cart. Um, but it's that simple. All this stuff works automatically out of the box. You can fill out the billing details. Go ahead and press that we want to buy it. We want to proceed to PayPal. 
to pay for it. And Barrett's going to ask me to log into PayPal and pay for it. Um, I'm not actually going to buy this non-existent antler back scratcher for myself at the moment. Maybe later tonight, so... We're just going to go back to customizing and setting up the website here. I'm going to change this hashtag to the button link that takes me uh, to that product page. And I'm going to change that button in the big title section to the same thing. That way any link anybody clicks on this page to go and buy the product will take them to a page where they can actually go and buy the product. Now, if I go to WooCommerce in my order or my uh, WP admin, you can see I've already got an order here. That's from when I added it to the cart and went to checkout um, and made it all the way to PayPal. But you're going to see here, it put the order in in uh, my notifications here, but it still says I'm waiting on payment because I never went and logged into PayPal and paid for it. But it's got tax figured in there. It's got no shipping because I elected for free shipping in the setup process. I recommend you don't charge people for shipping either but if their state requires it you do need to charge them for tax obviously now I want to show you some plugins that I use and I'm not going to take the time to install them all or configure them all but if you've gotten this far you'll be able to figure them out um, based on their instructions um, first thing I want to show you here is CSS Hero and I've got a list here of plugins I'm using on blogdojob.com I use CSS Hero because, like I said, I can't write any code. You probably can't either if you're watching this video or you know how to make a website already. Um, but CSS Hero is a plugin I pay, I pay 20 bucks for for the year, so it's basically nothing. Um, and basically it lets me just click on anything on the website and change the size of it, change the font of it, change the spacing, um, anything. Anything you could write code for really, you can change. Um, in here without writing any code. Saves you a lot of time, a lot of effort, especially if you don't know how to code already. Go ahead and save that. So I actually like the size of those now. On to the next plugin. Um, Facebook Conversion Pixel, I mentioned that earlier, that just allows you to post a code from Facebook in the bottom of your posts. Um, it leaves a box for it and this puts it in the right section of your code if you paste that in Facebook gives you that and basically whenever somebody comes to that page um, it's going to capture their Facebook info so you can serve them ads later Google Analytics that's an obvious one you're going to want to see who's coming to your website and from where and on what devices redirection if you're doing affiliate links you might use redirection to make them a little cleaner and so you could track the links wouldn't have to change them throughout the website sumo me a lot of nice free marketing tools here um, that you can use on your website. Heat maps shows you where people are clicking. Content analytics shows you what people are reading. Share buttons. Um, smart bar is that bar you see at the top of uh, blogdojob.com that collects people's email addresses. All that good stuff. And unbounced landing pages, that's the thing you can use to build a specific product landing page if you want a little more customization than the uh, theme we just built with. That's an extra cost though. And Yoast SEO just helps you to optimize your page for the search engines. Um, now I've just got a little clip of what we ended up with, how it works. Um, thanks for watching. I hope your your website build went as smoothly as possible. If not, feel free to email me. My email is zach at blogtojob.com. Um, I'd also like you, for you to email me your finished site anyways, and I would be happy to send you my free product sourcing and marketing guide um, as a thank you for signing up and building a website here. And that's gonna show you exactly how I go about finding products to sell and how I market them and how I make um, such big margins in drop shipping. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my email list on blogtojob.com as well and you'll get a lot of free tips, um, free articles, good stuff like that in your email.